Hey everybody, my my voice is a little rough. You're going to have to kind of excuse me. If you notice um, in the last video what you should be doing in your garden uh, for January 2021, I showed you my garden planner screen that kind of looked something like this in a way. Um, since that time or since that video, I've actually been updating this as a spreadsheet that I can share to help you out with your garden. What I did was I made this where if you notice up here there's a last frost date and a first frost date. You can fill in the dates for your growing zone that you can look up online and it'll adjust all these dates down through here when you should start your seeds indoors when you should plant them outside and the expected harvest date. I also put a padded last frost date and a padded first frost date. What this is, your padded last frost date is two weeks after the last frost date for your growing zone. And the reason why I did that is because the growing zones the last frost date is on a 30% probability and every year if I planted plants on April 29th like tomatoes they'll get destroyed by frost the first or second week of May so the padded last frost date is basically two weeks added on to your last frost date and then two weeks subtracted from your first frost date for the second one. So I'm in zone 6B and my last frost date is 429. And you can fill in the year. It's really better if you do. But let's say that it was supposed to be, we'll go ahead and use this as an example, 429 says I should start my seeds for onions indoors around January 21st. But what if it was 529? So I'll go ahead and change the date. And you can see it updated. I should start my seeds indoors around February 20th. Also, it says plant outside 5 1, harvest 6 10. So let's change it back to 429. You can see. The plant outside date and the harvest dates also changed. Now, if you're planting multiple varieties, you can actually be a lot more detailed. And let me kind of show you an example. Let's go down to tomatoes. I can put the type of tomato if I'm um, if I'm doing multiple determinate and indeterminate. What I can do is highlight that line right click and select insert a row above then I can just copy this whole line and paste it and then I can put in here say Roma now I can also be a little bit more specific if I go in the harvest date a determinate tomato is based on 126 growing days, which you can usually get off your seed packet. An indeterminate variety is also based on 126 days. But if the growing days for my tomato, say the bromas are only 85, I could change that to 85. So when I copied that row, it basically changed the uh, last frost date up here. I'm about to really mess up. This is supposed to be B3, not B2. There we go. So now everything is correct. So I changed... The growing day is 85, and it made my harvest, anticipated harvest date over here. Um, 
anyways, another thing I did was down here, last days to plant for success. Some of these um, varieties of vegetables, they have a certain number of days they grow in. And as an example, Sun Glow corn is one of the shortest growing days corn you can get. Requires the fewest number of days. And matter of fact, it adds about two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks shorter growing time than what most other corn requires. So what I did was, based on the average days it takes to grow something, I went down here and created another chart, which is the last days to plant for success. And what this is based on is our padded first frost date. So for example, let's say that um, beans normally take about 60 days. So I took the last frost date, subtracted 60 days, and that'll tell you you have to plant beans by August 15th in order to harvest them before your first frost. So that's what that is about. So this is also kind of going to be my updated video for what you should be doing in January based on Zone 6B. We should be starting onion bulbs from seeds indoors around the 21st of January. And if you're going to be planting parsley from seed, you need to start it indoors around January 28th. They will both, being as the seeds were started about a week apart, they can both go outside about a week apart starting April 1st and April 8th. And then the harvest dates are a little bit different. Over here, I've got kind of a color chart with a color key over here that shows the months. This right here actually ain't supposed to be there. There we go. <laughs> go ahead and save this. Um, so you got a color chart over here, January through December, and you can quickly kind of look down through here, plant seeds outdoors, January, February, March. Transplant outdoors, April, May, June and harvest. I was going to make this so that these updated with whatever the date was in these columns. I never got around to it. I may do that uh, soon, but right now it's not done. So anyways, just wanted to show you this spreadsheet. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It'll be on my Google uh, documents folder. You'll have to save a copy to your local computer or copy it to your Google Docs drive in order to edit it. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. As always, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your homestead. Hopefully 2021 is better than 2020. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Like this video. And stick around. I got a lot of videos coming up. Thank you.